my soccer universe. Yeah, we're looking back at Northwestern Europe and for a change since headline number one. None of the top six teams are the nominal top six teams, although to be honest, I question the membership of one or the other club there have won this weekend, which I don't think has happened a lot, if at all. And so I decided, well, um, I could have pulled down another English team that actually performed well, Villa, for instance, but I decided, ah, let's go with PSV, let's give the Eredivisie a little bit of love, and I have not worn this uh, wonderful, great jersey on the channel anyway, and it also it's a little bit looks Southampton-y as well, so, you know, can go there, but it's, of course, PSV from Eindhoven, although I'm an Ajax fan, I just got this for the channel. Just want to see. So yeah, we had the first headline, um, which is the main headline I have to say right, right, right at overarching over everything that happened in the Premier League. I want to add a very dull Manchester Derby, and yeah, uh, very and again trouble for Arsenal. I have to say, uh, and then yeah, the uh, top two travel to London. One was already in London, but travel to uh, the south of London and only pick up draws and in some cases rather lucky. And in the Eredivisie, yeah, we have the big three, are one to three at the moment. So let's jump into the matches in the Premier League. It started out on Friday evening with Leeds United against West Ham United, where Leeds took an early lead, but West Ham played in the black jersey. I have to say, I have to give them some credit. Those look actually quite good. They come back, uh, turn the game around, I think, late. They get the winner. Wolves is the better team in the West Midlands derby, East Midlands derby, whatever. Uh, it's a derby. <laughs> um, Wolves is the better team, has more chances, everything. However, it's Aston Villa who gets the win very late on... Um, that came unexpected, even with man down. Newcastle United are uh, out of COVID trouble and rather surprisingly get a 2-1 win over West Brom. This was the one chance that West Brom had to maybe get another win or, you know, to get to increase their, their account before the coach Slavon Bilic gets fired. Let's see if he will remain in there. I was really looking forward to the Manchester Derby, but I should have known most of those top matches are not all that great. And this is another one. It was Boring. I mean, technically interesting is probably the nice way to say it, but it was really, really a boring game overall. Um, if Riyad Mahrez would have put away the big chance where it's such a nice attack and then um, the way De Bruyne gets it into Mahrez, who I think if he takes the shot straight away, he probably has a better chance than he kind of gave it a little bit of heavy touch. He gets again, but then all the defenders could converge on him. I think speed was of the essence there and this didn't, did not happen. And the other uh, point where you thought something might happen is when the penalty was given for United in the second half. I was taken away by Wabi because Rashford was in offside. And everything else were just rollers onto the goal. Boring. Absolutely boring. And... I, I was afraid that the Madrid derby will go the same way, fortunately it didn't, and this was the really only really bad game that I watched. Bad, as I said, technically interesting, I can see that, but overall it was a rather boring game to watch, not exciting at all. I didn't watch Everton against Chelsea, but Everton did what they had had to do, uh, shut up shop, get a penalty, Sigurdsson converts, and Chelsea, yes, I think they had twice the post, but overall I think it was a good performance by Everton, who dug in, Got a win again, and that's a big win for them. Big win also, Southampton over Sheffield United. Yes, Sheffield United is abject at this point. I think they are his, the historically worst starter into the Premier League uh, at this moment. And already the first goal through Adams. I mean, the, the way you see it, suddenly the ball comes to him. The, the defenders are on, under there. He, he, he can sneak it into net in the 34th. Uh, and then Armstrong and Redmond make it a 3-0 convincing Southampton win. Um, and Southampton, as we'll see, are rising in the top of the table. Um, probably due to not playing in Europe, that helps definitely. But it, it definitely looks good for Southampton at the moment. And Ralf Hasenhüttl, which I'm a little bit happy because I remember seeing him play in Austria. A uh, little bit of a clumsy, but an uh, efficient striker. So it's kind of funny to see him as a really, really, really good coach. That, yeah, in Dortmund they are already thinking about him as well, but I don't think he will go to Dortmund. I think he will want to stay in England and get a top job there in the end. 
Speaking of top jobs, Spurs. Um, yep, the Crystal Palace goalie was the man of the match. He had great saves in the first Equator, but he also completely misjudges a shot by Kane. Still, the, what the saves he pulled then, or in the first one, then late in the second half, I think an argument can be can, can, can made for him to be man of the match, uh, despite this rather uh, clumsy looking uh, attempt to save Kane's shot to make it 1 0 again, Son assisting Kane. And then, of course, what does Spurs do? Yeah, we just had a game midweek. We uh, we want to uh, reserve ourselves, so let's hang deep. And it did not pay off because Schlupp gets in the 81st. I think he got the equalizer already last season against Spurs. He gets another equalizer later on. Then, uh, uh, as I said, Spurs having two really good chances that uh, Guaita saves rather spectacularly, and it ends 1-1. Uh, and you think, yep, this is another chance for Liverpool to take control. Nope, they don't even show up. Jurgen Klopp was yelling on the sidelines. I mean, totally agitated. I, have, have, I haven't seen like that, him like that in a long time. Wake up, wake up, wake up! I mean, really going out of him himself, being mad at, at this player. Fulham was the better team in the first half, totally deserved. The um, the goal through Reed was also ni nicely played, a nicely take, taken shot to make it to one in the in the twenty fifth. Yes, Liverpool then had uh, more chances, got a penalty, and then Salah uh, converted. I think there was a penalty call potentially in Fulham that the ref even on VAR decided it's no penalty. I think there was something like like that I heard, but I also didn't see it, and I didn't see it in the highlights. But yeah. Liverpool with a rather lucky draw, and again, yeah, they stay st uh, close to Spurs, but yeah, at least they pick up points, which is something Arsenal cannot say. And uh, I don't wanna really down on Ar Ar Arsenal; they are in, in bad shape at the moment in the league, and they played overall quite well and would have deserved the lead. I mean, they played Burnley for most of the time off the park. However, there was one red card by Shaka, so completely unnecessary uh, action where he sent off and then the, the ad gives Burnley kind of a little bit breathing room and in the end, after a corner, it's Obama Young who heads it into his own net. I mean, that signing, I actually could see that Obama Young going, uh, being re-signed by R. Arsenal is a big deal and I thought this might actually work for, for them because they're really a striker. What has, has he done since then? It, I come more and more, it's not only in soccer, but also in American football, but when you give someone a big contract, they are not going to get there anymore. Uh, and they're not going to put the uh, performances in. It's not worth it. Obviously, it's not worth it. So yeah, Burnley steals a win at Arsenal, who would have at least deserved the draw, but you know, Arteta, I don't think they will uh, blow, a blow it up, and I don't think Arteta is to blame. I actually think it's the recruitment on the board. I have been saying that all along. And Leicester has a rather easy win at, uh, against Brighton. Yes, they, Brighton had first a few chances, but as soon as 1-0, one, one I think there were two nice Madison goals. 3-0 for Leicester. Rather easy. So in the table, not much changed, uh, except that Southampton and Leicester uh, go now in the Champions League spots. Leicester was already there, but go a little bit higher up. It's a little bit uh, getting more into touch with the top two. Um, Southampton uh, in fourth, also there. Uh, Chelsea's in there. Um, and yeah, the Manchester teams at eight and nine. But again, the table is rather uneven. Uh, let's call it all, uh, let's adjust for it. And we see if we do that, then the, actually at least United goes in, into six. Aston Villa makes a big jump as well as the City. So I think this is a much better picture of how the standings are. As for the championship, we see uh, City now a bigger fa fa favorite ahead of uh, Liverpool. And then it's Chelsea and Spurs kind of hanging in there as well with United also giving a slight chance. So I think it's those five that will make it in the Champions League. As for the bottom, um, West Brom, Sheffield seem like foregone conclusions. Maybe Fulham can make it. We have to see. We have midweek rounds in, uh, also in England and we have the big one Wednesday at 9 o'clock between Liverpool and Spurs. 
and I'm honestly a little bit at, at a loss because there are many at that time there's like many many great games also in Italy and a little bit in Germany as well. Um, I also am curious to see what Arsenal and Southampton will do. Um, if Southampton can confirm Leicester against Everton uh, sounds interesting as well. And yeah, um, Thursday, Sheffield United, Man nah, Sheffield United, Manchester, I don't, I don't think. I think uh, West Ham United, Crystal Palace, uh, London Derby, that could to go a long way. As I said, I'm not sure if I will do a midweek video. So here's also the um, games that will be played on the weekend. It starts on Saturday. Uh, Liverpool has to also make the trip, uh, the trip to Crystal Palace. So interesting to see what they will do. Uh, Spurs, Leicester. Spurs having a rather, rather tough schedule. Uh, Everton Arsenal uh, sounds interesting uh, from the names uh, Chelsea, West Ham United. I think that's also one to watch. I want to say uh, Man United against Leeds United. I just don't see it. I just don't see that. I will not break a lot of sweat for that one. And then we can move to the Eredivisie where, as I said, the big three are uh, also the top three now because Vitesse drops points against Herrnwein. Um Before that, Ajax really having no trouble against Zwolle. I've seen actually a little bit of the game. It was total, total, total match by Ajax with 3-0 at the half for Ajax, Hüntela, Promes and Anthony. And then very late, Grafenberg makes it 4-0. Uh, as I said, Vitesse, uh, they were in second place, but now they drop points. They were up uh, in the 39th, and the, but then uh, Herrn Wayne gets an equalizer. I don't know much more about the game, but a uh, remarkable result for Herrn Wayne. Uh, Feyenoord at uh, Venlo, where Ajax uh, scored famously thir 13 goals. Well, they had to pick themselves up after being eliminated by, by lowly Wolfsburg, and they get a 3-0 win um, through Tumstra, Berghuis, and again Tumstra. In the 72nd, so within I think uh, 10, 10, 10 minutes to score all the um, three goals. I saw highlights of PSV's win against Utrecht, and the first goal by Marlen was really nicely done. Where Götze comes, uh, makes a pass in, and Marlen with his back heels it in. Uh, Ihataren again after Marlen assists in the third seven makes it to the sense actually PSV in a good way. However, then some um, late on some defensive. Uh, Miscommunication uh, allows Mahi to uh, pull one back and then very late on the goal he had to make a big save to preserve the win for PSV but I think it was overall deserved win and another win also for AZ or 3-1 over 20 and Schede. and so in the table we have as I said Ajax ahead of PSV ahead of Feyenoord Vitesse is now in fourth place AZ with the game less, it's a little bit down, so let's adjust here as well. And as we'll see, this adjustment puts AZ ahead of 20. Um, the problem for AZ is, of course, the many, many draws. And I have to say, there are quite a few teams with a lot of draws in the Eredivisie. Uh, Eredivisie does not have a midweek round. I would assume they play uh, a, a cup round, but I'm not 100% of that. But here, the weekend fixtures. Vitesse against Feyenoord, I think, is the standout tie, uh, given the table situation. PSV should have an easy game at Walwijk, uh, and similarly Ajax against Den Haag. So yeah, that's it from me for this weekend from the Premier League and the Eredivisie. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more, drop a line below what you thought about the games, uh, whether you agree with me or not, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!